Um, so, this is my newest creation right here. And I do have the question, why didn't Boeing ever do this? You know, the famous 747. It was built for a time span of over 55 years. And over the 55 years, it was interesting to see the progress, especially on this right here, the hump of the airplane. I mean, we took a look at the 747 prototype. Back then, there was just a slight hump there with a little cabin, three windows, without even having in mind mind very much that they would ever put a proper cabin in the upper deck of the airplane. In fact, the reason why the 747 has this hump in the first place is because Boeing thought that this airplane would also have to make a great cargo airplane with a big door. Where would that door be? Of course, in front. Yes, the famous nose door of the Boeing 747. In order to make that possible, you need to somehow place the 747 cockpit above the actual cabin in the second floor. And this is why the hump existed in the first place but once again over the years it was interesting to see that hump only getting longer and having more seats this is the 747-100 this is the then updated 747-200 and you can see yes that hump slightly got longer with the trend only continuing on the boeing 747-400 400. Here we now have quite a long cabin in the second deck. We can even see inside. Airlines would have their first class cabin up here. It's not necessarily large though, still. And then some years later, of course, there came the latest version of the Boeing 747, the 747-8. With the beautiful new engines here that are a lot more quiet and with an extremely more longer cabin space up there in the upper deck. It is true, over the years, the hump really was a progress bar. Small, bigger, even bigger, bigger. And so we now have a proper cabin here, which is actually quite long now. And what is also interesting here in comparison to the old 747s is this staircase down there to get to the peasants people cabin. Look at it. Now the question really is though, why did Boeing never consider finishing this job of lengthening <laughs> the upper deck? The Boeing A380 in some way. Yes, everybody, I have finished the job now. I have put, um... More cabin space. You practically now have 600 people being able to sit in, inside of his Bo Boeing 747. Yes, of course. Technically, this would have been possible, Boeing. Why didn't you do it, Boeing? Okay, maybe because it doesn't make sense. Why would an airline that could barely even fill their Boeing 747-8s have an even bigger airplane? That's the, you know, same malady of the Airbus A380. These planes are just way too big. Also, uh, let's maybe find out if this plane even flies at all, considering now the very much extra weight. We would probably need an engine upgrade and a wing upgrade. Everything needs to be changed here because this is a significantly differently flying airplane now, I, I think. Let's maybe check out the cabin though because I tried to do the modeling right. Here is the cockpit. That stays the same. Once we go into the cabin though, we can see, yes, a proper... Ca oh, we can see through the wall. It doesn't matter. Look, here's once again the boothiness class. Oh, we can see old members of the old 747s. We have refreshed that now with the new 7479. Um, this is what this looks like and you know just kind of simulating what more they could have fit into this airplane once again like 600 people we're talking about the Boeing edition of the Airbus A380 which in hindsight I mean the A380 failed because of many reasons, I don't think a Boeing 747-9 like this could have performed any better. Talking about performance, I have no idea if we're going to be able to take off here. This airplane weighs significantly more now. This is like f almost 500,000 kilograms here on a normal loading configuration. To the point where you'd also have to do some changing on the landing gear, of course. That's way too weak. Because we're going to be flying above maximum takeoff weight all the time. And landing weight, of course, as well. So let's see, um, let's give in full power. Come on, you little General Electric engines. Uh, you can, you can do it. Um, full power. It's, uh, yeah. Let's see if this very old design airplane still flies well. I mean, this is practically a 707 with an upper deck, to be honest. Uh, so, come on. Uh, we have, I'm failing to take off here. But that's normal. We're at a very short runway. And, uh, Okay, how about we fly to St. Martin Island? God, the scenery is dreadful here. Doesn't matter. This place is known for the 747s. Let's see if it would fly if it had two decks. Full power. Yes, come on, you can do it. Yeah, that took a while. 747, you can do it. Take off now, we're at 120 knots. Are those wings able to produce... There's nothing happening here when I pull on the yoke, God damn it! I made this airplane severely underpowered. Help! Okay, that is a bit 
worrying, honestly. Uh, so yes, we would need an engine upgrade. Maybe 4GE9 the engines, lol. Yes, how about LAX? I mean, the 747-8 would be too big for St. Martin anyway nowadays because it's a Foxtrot category airplane. By the way, just wanted to show you my ma my modeling skills. This looks exactly like the, uh, the A380. Look at all the doors opening. I've done this extremely well. So it's now time to take off. We do need full power, though. Yes, in real life, you definitely need a change of en engines there. Uh, come on, you can do it. You can do it here. Oh, this airplane is wobbling around a little bit. You can see the landing gear kind of struggling. Like when I go right and left. Yeah, look, look at that wobble. <laughs> this plane's just way too... Look at this. <laughs> That's hilarious. Way too big. Let's see if this huge airliner can now take the skies. Come on, full power. I mean, essentially, we now have the Dreamlifter build. I just realized it's just a lot heavier. So, come on. Come on, come on, we are using quite a lot of runway. You are very slowly advancing in speed. 160 knots, you should do it. Wing, get, get the airplane airborne. You can't be that useless. Holy moly, full, come on, pull up. Pull, what the hell? And overrun and dead, absolutely dead. Oh, wow. All right, to be honest, maybe I would have, uh, oh yeah, I did, overdid it here on the weight calculations. Let's just um, plan this weight here. I mean, we should be able to take off. Like this was uh, maybe a little bit unrealistic. Let's try that again. Full power. Yes, there we go. Speeding up nicely. All right. And yes, look at that nose. Come on, get up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yes, 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 yes. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Take off. Take off. Take off. Don't you dare not take off now. We have done it, everybody. The 7479 is down. Okay. That was interesting there. Um, yeah, we apparently need 200 knots to just fly off of that wing here. We have made the worst airplane in the world. This is so underpowered. I generally wouldn't have thought this would happen. See, of course, I've made this quite a good simulation here. Of course, this is an aerodynamic simulation of this huge body now. And um, so uh, we definitely have... This is not what good. Hey, look, but now we're flying. It's just that this airplane doesn't really fly very well anymore. I mean, look at it climbing. We've turned the queen of the skies into the burger king of the skies. Go and speed up this flight simulator a little bit and see how much we can climb now. All right, 20,000 feet. We are barely, we have probably already reached service ceiling because we are losing speed. Oh my, I can't climb anymore. 25,000 feet is a realistic service altitude. And in order to reach somewhat proper speeds, we need to have this airplane go at full power. But other than that, now it flies nicely. It's just the engines have a lower service life because they're running at full power all the time. I'm kind of scared about landing this plane as well. Come on, but let's do it. Now, this is good. We are at 200 knots, which is needed in order for this airplane to stay in the air. Stop. Oh, we're, trying, we're dying. All right, this is fine. Yeah, if you fly at a high speed, this plane is okay. Yeah, you definitely need a bit of a wing upgrade there. They just do not provide enough lift for this airplane to properly fly. But I mean, the 747 is quite special. We've got the very tilted landing gear here on the 8, which means we should be able to see nice butter landings happening. We need more speed. Oh my god. I mean, the 747 is known as a plane that flies and lands relatively nicely. Uh, depends. I think I've ruined it now. Come on. I mean, we need to stay definitely above 180 knots in order to flare properly. 15, 14, 13, okay. 20, oh. That wasn't actually that smooth. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and reverse thrust now. Auto brake is auto braking. The immense weight doesn't make it a lot easy. We need to stop now. We need full braking. The immense weight and the immense speed doesn't make this airplane easier to stop, to be honest. But there we go. We've done it. That's not that that's not that bad. Look at it. The 7479 has landed nicely. Once again, this airplane would have been technically possible to do, but I'm glad Boeing didn't do it but rather focused on developing the 787 and the 777 more because now they would be out of business if they did the Airbus and tried to build the A380. No, we probably won't ever get planes bigger than the A380 or the 747s because they're not needed. Airlines really just want the small ones nowadays. So everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.